Open world games like Milky Way Melin can get very laggy when we start to add content to the game world. If your game is running like a slideshow as well, <laughs> don't worry. In this video, I will show you a tool built right into Godot Engine that will help us track down these issues and fix them. Game developers, especially amateur game developers, waste countless hours blindly trying to optimize the game. And I say blindly because usually they don't actually understand their own game. They don't understand what are the bottlenecks of their specific game, what are the pain points of their game. So for instance, they see on the internet that you should use a specific algorithm to create bullet hell games but maybe on their specific game the bottleneck is actually on the procedural generation algorithm and they don't understand why the game is actually running like a slideshow even though they are using the recommended rendering algorithm and on a side note here some developers especially those amateur developers try to optimize the game before it's necessary so even though no one complained about the performance of the game they try they waste countless hours trying to get the best out of the computer and that is uh, this is not a problem per se but you have a timeline to actually create and publish your game right to develop and publish your game so if you are wasting time with something that is not an actual problem yet you could spend this these resources so your time your money your effort into something that will bring your game into life so that will help you publish your game and well this is kind of hard to say and this can be a little bit negligent but don't optimize your game before someone complain about it so you should release the game wait for players to say hey this is kind of slow on my computer see if their specs match match the design spec for your game so you design your game to run on, on specific hardware right so if players are trying to run your game on a potato computer well you can say hey thank you for your report i'll try to optimize it but take note that your computer is not the design hardware that we intended to run this game on the other hand the lower the specs that you require to run your game the broader the audience that you can reach and this means more players which means more sales so it's kind of like a balance that you should pay attention to well i want to use these features these features will be good to add to my game but they will require a better hardware and well i want to reach more people for this game because this will drive more sales so you should well optimize these features so that they can run on lower specs or you can cut them off entirely if they don't actually bring any value to the pillars of your game so well let's get started so i have here milk Link, and i will be very honest with you I'm using this feature to actually make design decisions. I'm not using it to optimize my game yet because as I said, my game is very, this is just a prototype, so I don't have any bottlenecks yet. I don't have a laggy uh, experience yet, but I want to, the thing that brought me into this feature is because I want to see how many asteroids players have available at a given time in the game so I understand how I will balance the looting system of the game. This is my current focus, so I don't want players to have like huge amounts of looting available because this will make them, well, have an inflation into their resources, especially on the money that they have available. So this will, well, break the experience that I'm designing. So I want to make more data-driven decisions so that I can distribute these asteroids better in the game later on. This is not uh, something that will actually cause a huge damage to the performance of my game. But anyway, I want to show you how I'm doing that. Here I have, uh, this is kind of like the, the playground of the game. But here uh, at the headquarter, I have these asteroid spawners, right? And when I start the game, so when this uh, is ready, I add some asteroids. So uh, I think that eight on this one, six and four on this one. So a total of... 10 asteroids right so something that i i want to to show you is how you can actually add the monitors custom monitors so you can use this tab right here so we have the the debugger tab and we have stack trace errors evaluator profiler visual profiler and then monitors and you can see that we already have a lot of interesting data that we should that we can use to make informed decisions so we can use this data to understand how are our game running so for instance if you want to see uh, if your game is running uh, on smooth uh, 60 fps you can check this so you start to monitor it so something that i will probably pay attention to is in regard to these 
uh, orphan nodes, so currently I don't have any, but since I'm removing and adding some nodes very constantly on this specific game, I want you to pay attention to that as well because this can lead to a memory leaking uh, moving forward. So this is something that I will go on in further assessments of my performance. But well, these are the default ones and this can give very interesting insights about our game, but something way more interesting is to create our own custom uh, monitor. So in this specific case, I want to monitor how many asteroids I currently have on my game. So I have here this asteroids node, which is kind of like the container for asteroids, and I already added a, a script to it. And right at the beginning, so right at the ready method, I will create a, a monitor. So the way that we can create that is by assessing the performance performance single tone. So performance, and we can add, we can use this method. So add custom monitor, and we can use any string name, or we can also use some categories. So for instance, I will use the the following category: asteroids slash count so the actual monitor will be called count but it will be under the asteroids category and we should pass a callable as well that will be used uh, by the performance uh, singleton to uh, gather data about this specific monitor and in this case i will call this get uh, asteroids count and i will create this right below here get asteroids count monitors always ask for either a float or an integer number so you can't return any other thing from these callables right so in this case i will return an integer which will be the current child count oops yeah that's it if you if we go there we are we, we can already debug that so I'll, I'll just turn off the the music just so we can Test this out. So you can see that we already have 10 asteroids, but note that uh, there's nothing showing and displaying into the, the screen yet. So why am I creating these asteroids if the player is not seeing them? So this kind of like reminds me of this footage from .hackgu. Are you expecting the criminal to return to the scene of the crime? Isn't that too cliche, Ovan? Hmm. So, what do you think is located on the other side of this wall? There's nothing. The graphics for backgrounds that can't be seen by the players are not rendered in order to save processing power. That's just like you. Yata. So yeah, uh, as Ovan said, if the player is not seen, the game is not rendering it. Well, supposedly the game should, shouldn't should render anything. But in this case, we are creating this and this can, we are creating these asteroids and this can, well, take some processment, especially because these asteroids are, are running uh, the physics processment and other stuff. So ideally, I should only create these asteroids when the player can see them. For instance, if I copy uh, let's say this asteroid right here, so this spawner right here, this can kind of like uh, become a snowball, right? Because let's say I will create one right here, one right there, and another one right here. So this will generate a, a lot of other asteroids that players are not even seeing. So we currently have uh, 28 asteroids that are not being displayed to players. <laughs> so there is no reason to make that, to instance them. So I'll take rid of this. What I'm going to use instead is to create a visual, uh, a, uh, how is it called on Grot 4? I don't remember, but it is the, the visual visibility notifier, right? visible on screen notifier. So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to increase that the, the rectangle, the visibility rectangle. So it's kind of like here. And only when I, I'm going to remove this, right? So uh, it's not on the ready callback from the asteroid spawners. I'll disconnect those. And I'm going to connect the screen entered uh, to the, the count method of these counters. So count, connect, screen entered, count, connect. And also I want to uh, kill free 
these asteroid spawners because I, I only spawn these asteroids the first time just so players will have some asteroids to clean up for a specific quest that I have here. So after that I don't need those, uh, those asteroids or to spawn more asteroids. So after uh, creating these asteroids I'm going to call the kill free method on the, the parent node, so on this common ancestor and I'm going to kill it free. Technically we should create 10 asteroids uh, but only when this is available on screen. So let me just decrease that because I want to test this and as it is, it's already showing on the screen. So I'm going to decrease this. Well, let's see if this works. Yeah, you can see that we don't have any asteroid count yet. But as soon as we move toward, yeah, you can see that we created 10 asteroids. So I'm going to mark, the, I'm going to check that so that we can um, monitor the asteroids count. I'm going to move some and you can see that it updates the the count right here right and well this is what i actually use this uh custom mon monitor for so i i want to see what's the curve so that i can have some insights about how many asteroids players have available and how many asteroids players are destroying so that i can well distribute more asteroids around the space to create a better farming grinding experience. We can use this custom monitor to create our own analytics tool so that we can make data-driven decisions, be it for game design like I'm doing to balance out some resources and create a better experience for our players, be it for performance so that we can figure out and pinpoint some pain points or bottlenecks from our project and fix them, or be it for anything. This is a very flexible tool that we can use to have some insights about our game. And if you want to become a better game designer and developer, I will highly recommend you to enroll for Mission Celine, my six months long mentorship in which I'm going to create a replica of the game Asteroid. So we only have five slots left, thank God for that. In this mentorship, we, as I said, we create a replica of the game Asteroid and by doing so, we learn a lot about the ins and outs of making a game, designing, developing and publishing a game. And this is tailored for your specific needs. So this is basically a template that you receive once you enroll for this mentorship and I will tailor it for your specific demands. So for instance, this is a template based on my latest client, which asks for help for guidance in learning the solid principles and game development design patterns. So you can see that I designed these achievements for him. And well, this one is very good. The one and only is about implementing the single pattern in your project. And I made some versions, some hardcore versions. So for instance, this one implement a single tone pattern in your project without using the auto load feature, which is kind of cool, right? But if you don't want to recreate a game to recreate a classic game and you already have some issues that you want to solve very urgent in your project, I also offer the mission star path, which is my consistency service. So by acquiring the consistency service, I will help you solve specific issues on your project. And guys, if you want to help me somehow, <laughs> If you want to help me achieve this month's goal of um, founding another month of development for Milkway Mailing Inc, which is how I, uh, the project that I'm using to create this content, you can become a Ludonaut as well. So by becoming a Ludonaut, you have access to exclusive discounts. So 20% discount on everything. So on the first line to first dollar course, the platform essentials cookbook on top uh, recipes and also on the commission. So on Mission Star Path and, and Mission Celine. So I... I will recommend you actually to first become a Ludonaut and then acquire the, the missions because this will give you a 20% discount on them. Join my community and become a Ludonaut. That's it. Leave a thumbs up on this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more content about game design and development with open source tools. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and see you in the next time. Bye-bye.